For the following exercises, use the values listed in table 6 to evaluate or solve. So it says find f of 1. All right. So we've seen it now many problems, right? Check out the playlist. All right. We got this video on a playlist and uh, the prior, I don't even remember now, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 problems, right? Very, very similar. All right. So, um, and every problem, well, I try my, I try to maybe explain it in a different way, if I can, sometimes, you know, how many different ways can you explain a concept, but uh, just in case, uh, you know, a certain explanation connects, or a certain explanation might not connect, it depends on who's who's viewing the video. Um, so what I try to do is I try to maybe explain it with a different flavor, so to speak, in other videos, all right? So if one of these might seem a little confusing, maybe check out another one. I probably am going to explain it differently, all right? And that might be better for you. All right, it all depends on one's learning style. So, on with this. What is the, this is in English, this is basically saying, um, tell me the y value when x is equal to 1. Remember, all function notation looks like this. Okay, so first, I do not like, whenever I see f of x here in like a table, I, if I see an x value here, I'm just going to cross this out and call it y. We've talked about that many, many times before. Okay, just makes it easier. So I know here in this, what's given to me is x is equal to 1, and what they're asking then is what's the y value equal to. That's what they're asking in this question, okay? They told me x is 1. So all you got to do is go to the table, find where x is 1, and then you're literally going to say, well, what's the y value? Oh, it's 0, right? And, uh, and that's it. So f of 1 is equal to 0. It's that simple. Let's go to the next one. So why don't we do now maybe uh, the one right below it, okay? So now it says find the inverse function of negative 1. So what this is now saying is that f of negative 1, this is the x, and that's the y. Okay. The relationship between the inverse function and we can call it the original function is going to be as follows. The x is always technically inside the parenthesis, the y is always technically outside the parenthesis, but whatever y value this is, will be identical and the same as the x value inside of the opposite or the inverse function, okay? Now I'm calling this the inverse function just because they started me off with the inverse function. In other words, this is the inverse of this, right? And if I took the inverse of the inverse here, I'd get back the original, okay? It's almost like inception of functions, right? Great movie, by the way, great movie. Um, okay. DiCaprio is amazing, amazing. Anyway, so here's the x, right? The red x. So that's going to become now the new y value, all right? So what I realize here is, now remember, this whole table is based off of not inverse functions, but original functions. So if I just kind of get rid of that little x I have through there, just keep that in mind. Right? This is not inverse, this is original. So you can even write a little note there, this is original. Okay. Now, what they're telling us is this. It says find the inverse function when, uh, uh, when the inverse function is x's value is equal to 0. So watch. Now my question is, in the original notation, this red x was really what value? The red x was really the y value, right? In the original. So what that means is that I could ask myself this question and rephrase it like this. Okay, now the reason why I want to do that is because my table is in terms of the original function, not the inverse function. So now what this is telling me is that I have to look on the table for where my y value is equal to zero. So where is the y value? Remember, I crossed this out, I said y, okay? Where's the y value equal to zero? So let me get rid of some of those highlights. The y value here is right there, okay? And then the question is, well, what is now the new x value? Or what is the x value that correlates with that y? Oh, one. Wait a minute, that sounds confused, right? Is, is it really that that's it? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> That's the, this is it now. So the inverse function here. So then if this is x, then that was the inverse is y, right? So this is minus one of zero is equal to, as we just said, one. This is the answer, 
This is the answer, okay, for this question. Another way to view it is very simply like this. If you know that the coordinates here of the original function is going to be 1, 0, right? I'll write it over here. For the right, uh, original function, you had a coordinate of 1, 0. Then for the inverse function, all that's going to happen is that the values switch. Literally, the y becomes the new x and the x becomes the new y. So if you know that your x value here of the inverse was the original function's y value, that's why I went to the table and I said, where's that original function's y value? And then I had to find simply the x value. Okay? That's all it is. It's that simple. All right? So let's move on to the next one. Let's run through these two now. Okay? So it says solve f of x is equal to 3. In other words, the y value here is equal to 3, and we got to know, find the x value. All right? So simply go to your table. Find where y is 3. Where is y is equal to 3? Boom, boom. Okay, there it is. Right? And then what's the x value? 7. So that's the answer. So f of 7 is equal to 3. Now notice what they're doing down here. Right? They're giving you the inverse, and notice how this is the 7. Right? So guess what? This all this original uh, 7 becomes the y value, and then the original y value becomes the x value. So I already know the answer, right? This is f minus 1 of 3 has to be equal to 7. We're just switching the points. That's it. That's all it is, okay? The coordinates of this function is going to be the x value is 7, the y value is 3. So then that must mean the x value is 3 here and the y value is 7, and that's exactly what this is, x and y, boom, 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 boom. All right, guys, thanks very much for tuning in. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> I realize I do that a lot, but, uh, you know, I don't. for some reason, it makes it easier, right? If you say, oh, all it is, boom, 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 boom. Wow, simple. Okay, guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. Please help us out by subscribing, telling your friends, hitting the like button, and I look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.